William, the last time you were here, it was full of over 900 boxes. It looks amazing, Anna. And this yes. is what we have created. Wow. In a span of... I can feel Merca here. In it's, a span of six it's weeks. It's incredible. I'm glad that you... Gosh, she would have loved to have seen her studio so neat and tidy. And tidy, <laughs> yeah. Well, there's definitely a lot of clutter, but um, we've found the... Well, you know, she wrote a book called Love and Clutter. She did write a book called yeah. Love and Clutter. She we was found a great advocate for clutter. She was, and she, she and, hid everything uh, too. And How wonderful to be able to share this with everybody who knew Merca. Do you Even think that, people who... Do you think she'd be Merca. proud of what we've achieved? Yeah, I think she'd be thrilled, absolutely. She'd say, you've shown love for my objects. <laughs> <laughs> and she did love every uh, single object, from the boots to the typewriters and... I even oh, found look at her collection of cameras, found, and um, letters. Yeah, just right. all sorts of things in the strangest places. Her underwear drawer oh, and so bottom of books, in books. Well, and you'd have to say the spirit of Merca is alive and well. In, alive and well. In here. I must say, I felt, I felt her, her presence as well too whilst unpacking. Yeah. She's incredible. Yeah. I mean, are you sure you've emptied every drawer? I'm sure. We've oh no, you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> and the little notes too, like. I don't know if you remember that. She, the first book I bought in English, 1951. 51. Well, 1951 was when George and Mocha and my older brother Philippe arrived in Australia. Right, so, so quite significant. She was already buying books then in 1951. Yeah, and quite the title, A Rage to Live. A Rage to Live, she <laughs> exemplified that. So I think we had over... I remember that as a child. Oh, you do? Magic pudding, absolutely. She would have read that to us. And there's Very some, she's, she, oh, there you go. That was a gift to my brother in 1958. She'd often say to me, oh, you're going to have fun when I pass away because I'm filing all my letters in my books. And <laughs> you did tell me that in the and, beginning. And, and what did you say, 4,000 books? I did go like, through every single book. That's the equivalent I... of 4,000 filing cabinets. <laughs> it's quite overwhelming. It is. I'm, I'm sure and it's overwhelming. And you think that Merca used every single object you see to, to create art over her 60, 70 years of making art. And then there's paint Here's on her them. wonderful collection of magnifying glasses. Yeah, she seemed to... <laughs> she didn't wear reading glasses. She read everything that she read and boy was she well read. I mean, just looking at that you'd probably say each magnifying glass has probably read three or four hundred books. She loved collecting antique toys. She said it reminded her of her lost childhood Aww. because of her experiences in, in the war. With the war, of course. I've got a surprise for you that I've hidden in the bookshelf. Don't. It's finally finished. Are you kidding? Wow. <laughs> I was hoping it might be ready today. Doesn't that look superb? Yeah, wow. So. Quite a, quite a book. What in a itself. document, yeah. Oh, you've done a great honour and justice to Mocha, that's superb. It looks fabulous. Yeah. yeah. What does it make you feel when you look at that all now? Oh, teary. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lifetime. I'm looking at my mother's life. Uh, a life well lived. You're in there too, as a kid, oh, in the family. Yeah. It's wonderful to see uh, all these treasures in, in one place. Even the bikes. Yeah, even the... <laughs> needs a little uh, I mean, the attention. The tyres need a little, yeah. <laughs> a little inflating, but... Look, it's amazing to see this because I know every object has a story and it was very dear to Merka's heart. Anything specifically uh, in there that you remember? I remember everything. Everything. It's amazing, yeah. Uh, well, this would have given Mocha a lot of joy, and I'm, I'm convinced she will be thrilled to know that people from uh, all over Australia, hopefully, yep. will come yeah, and yeah. have a bit of Mocha in their life. That is really superb. And then there was the Document. It's thrilling to see that. That is yeah, a wonderful um, we even got, um, surprise. Pom pom. Her the cat's quite. Cat, it's uh, quite a chubby cat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she definitely spoiled it. It was what you call obese. 
<laughs> she would feed it fillet steak and smoked <gasps> trout and smoked salmon and fresh salmon. Oh my goodness. There you go. And, uh, All the delicacies of humans. And, uh, oh yeah, he was quite a character, Pom Pom. Well, he did live a full life. Very much so, and he interfered with a lot of Merkers. So. <laughs> well, there are a lot of cats. Artistic practices. There's a lot of cats yeah. in the... And this was the, the last easel That painting. was the last easel painting, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. In 2016, 16, I think you that's, mentioned. That's right, yeah. but it was just, just not long after Merker did that, she went into care. Into care, yeah. yeah. That's quite, quite a significant... You know, it's very thing. moving. One just uh, would love to imagine how it would have been Finished. Finished. What colour palettes was, she um, used? I mean, often with Merca, the paintings totally changed over the, the, the duration of their life. Right. In fact, I, often I'd get a bit angry. I'd go in and say, Mum, that's perfect. Don't touch it. That's, that's finished. It's finished. Two that's days finished. later, I'd go in and it'd and be a different painting. <laughs> <laughs> she was very keen on studying about everything. Um, yes. You know, if she had a new art project, uh, say take for example the mosaic at Flinders Street Station, she would buy every book on, on mosaics yep. that she could find and learn how the old masters made them, how, how it should be done properly. And similarly with cooking, she was, loved her cooking, particularly her French cooking. Cuisines, yeah. In fact, for years she would refused to get a dishwasher. She said, I love doing the dishes the day after a dinner party that, because <laughs> it reminds me of the conversations that yes. we had over dinner. Yeah, and people don't do that and, as much uh, anymore, do they? No. They're always cleaning she up was, quickly. And, she, yeah. was very, and she would always leave the table and only clear up the next day. That's great. And she said it was her time to reminisce. Yeah, and that's very bohemian. The previous evening's yeah. activities. Yeah. This is a very, very special aspect of Merkel's work that she started in the late 80s and uh, into the in the late 70s, rather, into the early 80s, where she decided to turn her drawings and paintings into three-dimensional embroideries. Um, they're quite unique in her herbs. There's not a lot of them. Um, but I remember when we first exhibited them, we'd have these old ladies come in to view the exhibition and they'd get all excited about about the stitching. They say, look Ethel, that's a so-and-so stitch. And, look Beryl, that's a so I haven't seen that stitch since 1932. Oh, um, and she, well, as, as we'd said earlier, she got all the books on embroidery stitching and, and perfected. Yeah. I mean, she could do, she was a dressmaker, so she knew a lot of stitching, but to get the kind of visual complexity, she, she discovered all these alternative taken, stitches. Oh, incredible. And of course the family sort of side to it is that we'd go to go to bed and there'd be a huge hole cut out of our sheet. Or our pillowcase would be missing. You know, Mum had just helped herself to our bedding to make, to make these embroideries. This is really a major work from the early 70s. And what's fascinating about it is how densely populated it, the, the, the surface is with, I call it her maximal period. It's where she right. crammed everything in that she was thinking about. Um, what's the medium she's done it's, a, it's an interesting work in the sense that it's a combination of charcoal as well as, as paint. And that's also quite rare. I mean, I think I'd mentioned to you earlier that, that large paintings were very rare for, for Merkel, and we only found two, in fact, when, when, when you uh, packed up her studio. Uh, for me, that really epitomizes what Merkel's work is all about, that love of humanity, lots of angels, lots of birds, lots of her mythical, mystical, mythical creatures morphing into one another. It's kind of like the ultimate group hug. Yeah, and you know, it's some text in there there's well. text on, on, on the lady's yeah. hat here and so on. Um, I mean, this used to hang in the Talano in, uh, uh, in, in Fitzroy Streets yeah. in Kilda yeah. when we lived there from uh, 1967 to about 1975. Yeah, I think we've got a photo of her in the cafe with, with the painting hanging behind. Yeah. So for me, that's. Uh, an exceptional work that really illustrates Merca at, uh, at her peak, I think.